I come from a wine growing family. The estate has been set up as a merchant company in 1680. I'm the ninth generation to run that estate. And the business idea of my ancestor was to ship the wine in barrels uh, on boat down the Mosul, down the Rhine, into the Netherlands, exchange wine against goods brought in from the colonies, salt, pepper, tea, all the good things that were totally unknown then time Europe, and bring them back up the Rhine, up the Mosul, and start distributing. For 200 years, that was the business in our company. And in 1880, my great grandfather decided wine should be the only commodity to profit. The grocery business and just concentrated on that. And what we have in front of us is a different expression of Riesling. Riesling is a highly individual grape variety that requires precision. Precision is part of the German uh, genome, of the Germanic character. Everywhere in the world where you have top Riesling wines, you have some German origin. An easy way to evaluate the bottles of German Riesling is the longer the words on the label, the more important the wine, the shorter the less important. So if something is really important, we name it. And uh, subsequently, when you have a bottle of German wine, you have to read the label and you have to interpret it. It's not the picture, but you have to read the label. Different towns, different vineyard sites, different quality levels, all that is given to the label, different cellar techniques, by adding token or fine health or head token. We have the morality, we have the fact that slate stone the guarantees not getting wet feet through the wines when there's too much rain on the other side. Uh, it keeps the humidity in the soil, it catches the sunshine, reflects it during the night, and uh, it gives a perfect mineralization during